When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock. I know he's able, I go to the rock. Where do I go? When there's nobody else to turn to, who do I talk to? When nobody wants to listen, who do I lean on? When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock. I know he's able, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders rejected. Run to the Oh, Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where do I go? When the storms of life are threatening, who do I turn to? When those winds of sorrows blow, is there refuge, refuge in the time? Tribulation, I go to the rock, I know he's able, I go to the rock. I go to the rock, rock of my salvation. salvation, go to the stone that the field was rejected, run to the mountain, the mountain, oh, with the earth all around me, it's sinking sand, oh, Christ the Son. Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, when I need someone to lean on, I go to the rock. 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 I run to Jesus. Bless his Thank holy you, name. Yes. Bless his Hallelujah. holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Stand against the Lord. Yeah. No one can, and no one will. Mm. Hallelujah. Who can stand against our King?
tell me who can stand against it. No one can. Nobody can. No one can. And no one will. Nobody ever will. They never will. Never will. No, 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 no. Who can stand against our king? Who can stand against the king? No one Hallelujah. can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And no one will.
God. Praise is what you do. Clap those hands Hallelujah. and give him glory. Yeah. Come on, clap those Hallelujah. hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord all over the place. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, stop for a moment and raise those hands and bless the Lord. And let the Lord know that he praises what I do. Because a praiser is who I am. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Thank Praise God. is what I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It's what I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's what I do. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Oh, oh, oh. It's what I do. Father, we've come, we've come and gathered in this place 
Yes. We are gathered on one accord yes, to give you praises, Ooh, to yes. sing unto your great name, yes. to declare your worth unto men. Yes, Father, we thank you. Father, in my shot. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We exalt your holy name. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like stand against you. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you the glory. My, 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 my. We give you my, 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 my. We give you, yeah, 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 yeah. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank you because we can always run to you. Thank you because we can always run to you. Thank you because we can always run to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you now. And we give you the glory. In the name of Jesus. Lift up the heart down here. Mend the broken hearted. Touch the sick everywhere. In the name of Jesus. Touch the sick everywhere. Heal God. According to your word. the name of Jesus. Heal even right now. Let your spirit, let your spirit, let your spirit have a right away. In the name of Jesus, save God. Save God. Save God. By your power, by your grace divine. In the name of Jesus, have your way, God. situation. Have your way, God. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you now. We thank you now. Bless your word as it goes forth today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, give it free course. Give it free course. In the name of Jesus. Let it accomplish that which you sent it to do. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Say that the power of God is against you. Loose your hotel. Loose your hotel. Loose your hotel. In the name of Jesus, come on out of hell. Come on out of hell. In the name of Jesus, we declare and decree it now. In Jesus' name. We give you glory. Yes, Lord. We give you honor. My, 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 yes, my, my. Lord. Yes, Lord. We yes, give you Lord. praise. In the mighty and master's name of mighty Jesus name, the Christ. Name. We thank you. Thank we thank you, thank you now. Thank you, In Jesus' Jesus. name. Thank oh, the Lord. Yeah. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. Right where you are, just lift those hands. Hallelujah. You don't have to be as excited as I am. But just lift those hands uh, and just tell God thank you. Thank you Lord. Yeah, and after you tell him thank you, ask him to have his way. Yeah, just tell God to have your way. Lord, have the my, 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 my shy. Hey, 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 hey. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the anointing of God. The anointing that destroys the yoke. The anointing that destroys the yoke. Just lift those hands. God, thank you, as healing is flowing. Healing is flowing. Deliverance is flowing. The peace of God is flowing. Tell God, thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, 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 hey. You should have what you ask for. You shall have what you ask for. If you ask in faith, doubting nothing. Ah, oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your deliverance that have gone out to every home. Yes, Thank you for your power that have made refuge yes, in every place of a board. Everywhere, my, 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 my. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, just clap those hands and give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you on this morning. Grab your Bibles, your iPhone, your iPad, your Android. Go with me to 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. Amen. 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. Amen. Let's see what the Lord would say to us, his people, on this morning. What a mighty God we serve. Certainly we thank God for the presence, of, for his presence that's, that's here in the sanctuary on this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. The presence of the Lord is here. Is here. Yes. Yes. The presence of the Lord is here. Yes. I feel him in the atmosphere. Yes. Amen. The presence of the Lord is here. And what I like about the Lord is when the Lord shows up, he never shows up empty-handed. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's better than Santa Claus on Christmas morning. <laughs> yeah. Amen. He may Amen. not have what you what you want, but he certainly has what you need. Yeah. Am I right about You're it? Right about Amen. It. God has exactly what you need. For God knows what you stand in need of this morning. Amen. Amen. And whatever you need, God is here He's to right meet here. your need. Right Amen. 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 And I know that all the praises can say amen. Amen. amen amen because amen. God is here to meet your need on this morning amen and amen second Corinthians the first chapter verses 8 through 11 and here is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord this morning second Corinthians the first chapter second Corinthians the first chapter verses 8 through 11 for we will not be ignorant brethren uh, we will not we would not, Jesus. brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, yes, Lord, which came to us in Asia, yes. that we were pressed on out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and thus delivered in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. I want to talk to you this morning from that passage of scripture uh, from the subject of the God of all comfort. Amen. Or uh, you may want to say the God who delivereth. Amen. The God of all comforts or the God who delivereth. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As we share with you this word on this morning. Amen. The God of all encouragement or comfort. 
everybody at some point in their lives get discouraged amen let me say that again because some of y'all could have said amen even at home you could have said amen but you didn't say amen so let me give you another chance amen to say amen to the word of god amen. everybody at some point in their lives get discouraged amen Amen. If this pandemic has not gotten to you, has not gotten you down, then praise God. Amen. But so many of us, so many people all over the world, all over the country, all over our city, and even in churches have become discouraged because of the effects of the pandemic. Every human being from time to time get discouraged. We live in a day where there is much hardship, sorrow, guilt, and even untimely deaths. Amen. People seek comfort from, for their sorrow in many different ways. Many people who are seeking comfort for their sorrow, they turn to drugs and alcohol nicotine sex and even food to feel better or to forget about their pain for a while but how many know it's only for a while amen and sadly this is the sad truth that the pain returns and often the temporary cure brings on other physical and emotional yeah. problems yeah. worse than what they were before we used the temporary cure Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the temporary cure brings you a lifetime of trouble. Yeah. Amen. If you had just went through what you was going through without trying to indulge in a whole lot of other stuff, you would have been better off. Amen. But sometimes we use this temporary cure, amen, and we begin, we get in trouble. Amen. The only real cure and lasting comfort and encouragement in this world is found in God's word and in his word Jesus says in the latter part of St. John 16 and 33 he says if we read it from the New International Version Jesus said that in this world he said while you live in this world and if you're living you're living in this world amen you're not living on Mars but you're on this world am I right about it amen he says while you are in this world you will have trouble am I right about it yeah. amen you're going to have trouble if you live in this world if you have Jesus you're gonna have trouble if you don't have Jesus you still gonna have trouble yeah. amen but you ought to be like all state you ought to be in good hands with Jesus <laughs> Am I right about it? Amen. Because you're going to have trouble either way. Amen. You can have trouble with Jesus. You can have, you're going to have trouble without Jesus. But it's better to have trouble with Jesus. Am I right about it? Amen. Why? Because you got somebody that will help you in your trouble. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Jesus said that in this world you will have trouble, but, but be of good heart. In other words, he says... Be encouraged. I have overcome the world. This coronavirus pandemic is very stressful for us as people. Uh, there is fear and anxiety about a new disease that we cannot even see. Uh -huh. And what could happen uh, can be overwhelming and cause strong emotional emotions in even adults and in children. Am I right about it? Somebody over this week sent me a little clip, I believe it was on Messenger, of a four-year-old little girl who was having a meltdown because of the lockdown. After being locked down for four months, she had had enough. Sitting at the breakfast table, she began to tell her parents, everything in this world is shut down. Now it's got to be shut down again. She goes on for just a little while, and it is very funny. And if you have not seen that little clip, I believe we'll play it after the service on our channel. Amen. But it is a very funny little channel. It is challenging for four-year-olds. It is challenging 
for parents who are now working from home and homeschooling their kids, being the daily activity, activities manager, and not only being the referee. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. If you have more than one child and you're a parent, you have to be, yeah, every now and then you got to be the referee. It's challenging for business owners. The daily changes of opening one day and, and closing the next day. It's challenging for, for all of us who are trying to learn the new learning curve. Not to mention it's how challenging it is for, the, for those who are sick, for those who are in the hospital. We can't even, who, who, those who are in the hospital, we can't even go see them and bring them some comfort, which in turn comforts us. Amen. Where do we go? Who do we turn to? What is our example and what lessons are we to learn? Well, a good place to start, I believe, is right here in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. The first thing that we see uh, what I want you to see is that God is the source of our comfort. Uh -huh. and we cannot talk about comfort without talking about suffering. Suffering has been a part of a man's life ever since God kicked Adam out of the Garden of Eden. Suffering was a part of the curse. Yeah, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, God cursed them and put them outside of the garden. And rather it is disease or an accident or trial or temptation, abuse or death, no matter what it is that we are suffering, everybody wants to know why me. Uh-huh. And when we begin to suffer, we all want to know why me? Tell you blame Adam. Uh -huh. And when you see him on the other side, you hit him upside the head for me. Is that all right? Amen. Because all the trouble, all of the tribulations, all the stuff that we face now, all of the diseases is a result of sin. And Adam sinned and called sin to enter into the world Amen. And it is, it is, oh God, it is. That's why we're here. And everybody who suffer wants to know why me. Amen. Why am I suffering? Suffering is the greatest uh, discussion here in this passage of Scripture. But this passage also lets us know that for the child of God, God is the Father of mercies. And he is the God of all comfort. God comforts the sufferer so that he might be a testimony to other sufferers. But I want you to notice that I didn't read verse 4, but I want you to notice here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible said, who comforts us in all of our tribulation. God comforts us in all of our tribulations, all of our trials, everything that we go through, God is there to comfort us. Apostle Paul here is not just talking about his suffering, but he's talking about yours and mine as well. Because if you're going to live in this world, you're going to suffer. God comforts all believers. Aren't you glad about that? Yes, That's why right now I just want to stop and tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know why I want to tell him thank you? I want to tell him thank you because he doesn't have favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know you don't know nothing about favorites, but every now and then they're, they're, they're in a family unit. Uh, there are those who are considered the favorite. In fact, all of my nieces and nephews think they are my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 I tell them all, you're my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and in every family there, they, I don't care how many kids is it, if it's one, if, it, if it's two, if it's three, anytime it's more than one, there's one that figure out 
They're the favorite. But I want to stop and tell God, out of all the people in the world, thank you, Lord, that you don't have favorites. If you let me tell it, I am his favorite. Lord, you ain't going to help me this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let me tell it. I, I know I, I know what the Bible said, but I want to talk. Yeah. I, I just want to, as good as he's been to me, all the things he brought me out of, all the things he delivered me from, I know I'm the favorite. Yeah, you may say it if you want to, but I already know who it is. Yeah, we ain't got to argue about it. No, uh, we ain't going to fight over it. No, uh, we ain't got to do none of that. Because no matter what you say, I ain't trying to hear it. You ain't going to help me. I ain't trying to hear what you say anyway, because I already know. Yeah, I know, I already know I, I am, I am the favorite. Amen. I know that God, that I am his favorite. And I thank God that, that I am. He don't have favorites. He don't have favorites. But I just believe in my heart uh -huh, that, yeah, that I am his favorite. God, God in his sovereign majesty, amen, who is the maker and controller of the universe, who controls all, amen. He's not far removed from us, but he's right here with us to comfort us in all of our suffering. Notice the word tribulation means to be weighted down exceedingly. It means to be pressed and crushed. It is the picture of a beast, a burden that is being crushed beneath the load that is just too heavy. Um, the word tribulation gives us the picture of a person who is ha heavily weighted. Play, pay, place, weights placed on his breast and he's being pressed and crushed to the point that he feel he is going to die. But because God is a God of all comfort, he is our spotter. You don't know nothing about that. Yeah, 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 because God is the God of all comfort, he is our spotter. Uh, let me tell you what a spotter is, because many of y'all might not know what a spotter is, uh, uh, but when you are in weight training and, and you're lifting weights and you're laying on the bench and you have all the weights on the bar and you take the weights off the bar and you begin to press them, uh -huh. sometime when the weight is too heavy, uh, it'll rest on your chest. Uh, but the spotter is the person behind you. Lord have mercy, you ain't going to help me. Uh, the, and, and the spotter is able to help you lift the weight, not only help you, but to encourage you, to push you yeah, yeah. to lift it a little more. Yeah. See, God is the God of all comfort, and when we are pressed beyond, oh, God, today. Uh, when we are pressed beyond our own mean, when it seems like life is going to crush us down, he is our spotter. He's there to say, you can make it. Yeah. Push a little bit harder. Come on, come on, come on. You, you can make it. You can do it. Yeah, he is our spotter. He's the God of all comfort. Uh, uh, not, only, uh, not only in all of our tribulation, but in all of our suffering. He's our spot in all of our affliction and our trials and trouble. God is there to comfort us because I heard the writer said, hear that God is the God of all comfort. Yeah. You see, God has a purpose for everything that you go through. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm going to say that again. God has a purpose for everything. Yeah, everything. everything he allows to come into your life, God has a purpose for it. Yeah. You, and so God allows a suffering afflictions, trials, and trouble so that he could be to you the God of all comfort. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because Andre Kraut sang the song, if I never had a problem, uh -huh, I would not know if God 
You ain't going to help me this morning. That's all right. Amen. I wish I could get somebody, amen, in Facebook land to, get, to clap your hands to the Lord. Uh-huh. Because if you never had a problem, you would not know that God could solve it. That's why I thank him for the things that he allowed in my life. God allows them. He allows our trial, tribulation, our suffering, and our affliction because he is a God of all comfort. But that's not the only reason. God's purpose is in comforting us is to make us a testimony to others. God comforts us so that we can comfort others who are suffering. God comforts us through trials so that we may carry others through their trials. God strengthens us so that we can strengthen others. In other words, he spots us so that we can spot you ain't going to help me. Somebody else. Uh, God helps us so that we can help other. God encourages us that we can encourage other. God matches the comfort to equal suffering. And no matter what the suffering is or how, how uh, terrible it may be, God shows us what the comfort of his son Jesus is. He does not give us some strength and comfort us to bear the, surf, the suffering. God gives us all the strength and all the comfort that is necessary to handle all of our suffering. There are no trials too great, no pressure too heavy, that God cannot match them with the comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ has borne every trial and suffered it all for us. Verse 5 tells us, uh, for I am the suffering of Christ abound, for as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation abound by Christ. Just want to tell you this morning that Christ has suffered the most humiliating experiences possible for any man to experience. I want to tell you that again. Christ has already experienced the most humiliating experiences that any man could experience. Can I walk you through a few of them? Yeah. Let me walk you through a few. Yeah. Matthew 1, 18 and 19 tells us that he was born to an unwed mother. Right. Luke 2 and 7 tells us that he was born in a stable. Uh -huh. The worst of conditions. Humiliating. Luke 2 and 24 tells us that he was born to poor parents. Humiliating. Matthew 2 and 13 tells us that his life was threatened even as a baby. 2 and 16 continues to tell us that he was the cause of unimaginable sorrow. Because he was born, Herod made the decree to kill all the boy babies, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right, of two years and under, right, which, which means that by, just by him being born, he caused a whole lot of suffering. Yeah. My God. Matthew 2 and 13 tells us that he had to be moved and shifted around as a baby. Didn't have a stable place. Luke 2 and 39 tells us that he was reared he was raised in a despicable place, you know it, called Nazareth. Matthew 13, verses 58, 53 through 58, tells us, leads us to believe that his earthly father died during his youth. Can I tell you just a few more of his humiliating experiences he suffered? Matthew 13, again, 53 through 58, tells us that he had to support his mother and his brothers and his sisters. Matthew 8, 20. Then Luke 9, 58 tells us about the humiliating experience of having no place to lay his head. Mark 14, 1 and 2 tells us about the humiliating experience that he was hated and opposed by the religious leaders of his day. Mark 3 and 21 tells us about the humiliating experience is that they, they charged him with insanity. You know that's humiliating. 
Oh, I can't get no help. Uh, Mark 3 and 22 tells us that not only did they charge him with insanity, but then they turned around and said he was demon-possessed. Yeah. You know that's got to be humiliating. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just let me tell you a few more. Uh, in Mark 3, he was disowned by his own family. Matthew 13, he was eject, rejected, hated, and opposed by his listeners. Mm -hmm. Mark 14 tells us that he was betrayed by his closest friends. You know I got to be humiliated. Yeah. Mark 14 and 50 tells us that not only was he, was he, he was betrayed, but they left him all alone. They rejected and forsaken, forsaken by all of his friends. John 18 tells us that he was tried before the high court of the land and charged with treason. John 19 and 16 tells us that he was executed by crucifixion, the, the worst possible death. Each of, these, each of these experiences reached the depth of humiliation. Christ stooped to the lowest point in human experience in every condition in all so that he can become the perfect sympathizer and the perfect savior. That's why the writer of Hebrews could write these words in Hebrews 14, 15, and 16. He says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but in all points was tempted like as we are yet without sin. He said, therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need but not only is God the source of our comfort God is the sustainer of our comfort uh-huh that's point number two in case you take in note God is the sustainer of our comfort the comfort and consolation is complete because it is from God and it is continuous, continually, because the Bible says that God comforteth us. C-O-M-F-O-R-T-E-T-H. It is an ongoing. Thank God that he is the sustainer of our comfort. Because if man was the sustainer of our comfort, it might run out. But God who never runs out, God who never goes dry, God who has all power in his hands, he is the sustainer of our comfort. Yes, he is. He is. He comforts us in every situation. He comforts us on a daily basis. And no matter what we go through, God is still our comfort. The story is told about Martin Luther. Martin Luther, who was the monk who started the Reformation. The story said that Martin Luther became discouraged. He began to mope around his home, and he lost his zeal for life. I feel my help already. I really ain't ready, but I kind of feel it already. He lost his zeal for life. The story says that he became inconsolable. No matter what his wife did, he just moped around and just would not get any better. So the wife decided, she says, he's not getting any better. So she put on her black dress. She took down her and put on her black veil. She put on her long black gloves. And she began to wear them around the house. Her name was Catherine, and one day Martin Luther looked up, and Catherine was dressed in all this black. Mm. She had a black dress and a black glove and a black veil on. Martin Luther said to his wife, she said, Catherine, who, has, who died? She said, oh, Martin, haven't you heard? She said to Martin, Martin, God died. Martin said, Catherine, that, that's blasphemy. She said, to him, so are you, my husband, when you walk around acting yeah. like God yeah. can't comfort you. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't going to help me. 
when you walk around like God is not there to help you, you are saying that God is not my comfort. (laughs) But I come to tell somebody this morning that God is your our comfort. He comforts us in every area of our lives. And when we get discouraged, mm -hmm, God is there to encourage us. But not only is God the source of our comfort, and not only is God the sustainer of our comfort, uh, but lastly, we are the stewards of God's comfort. (laughs) Yes, we are. We are the stewards of God's comfort. God comforts us in all of our tribulation, and this is the purpose a purposeful clause in order that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort which we all which we ourselves are comforted of God you see this is the truth we are blessed that we might be a blessing we receive consolation that we might give consolation we are encouraged that we may give encouragement God uses our life's experiences, the good and the bad, to enrich in us, to sharpen us, to deepen and stabilize us. You and I, we're just points of transfer. Lord have mercy. We're points of transfers for God's comfort. All we are are stewards of God's comfort. It has been given unto us in our time of discouragement, in our time of tribulation, in our time of trouble, so that we can pass it on to somebody else who God brings in our path. Your life is to overflow with the life of Jesus Christ. It is to abound in you. And everywhere you go, people ought to see Christ in you. You are to be the source of God's comfort in this present world. Can I tell you something? Tribulation and trials are supposed to be a seminary where we learn to become the stewards of God, the stewards of our suffering, so we can pass it on to somebody else. That's why I heard, I heard the songwriter say, the songwriter, he said, if I can help, Somebody, as I pass along, uh, along this way, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong, the songwriter declared, then my living, you ain't gonna even help me there, then my will not be in vain because I took the comfort that God gave to me. I took the encouragement that God gave to me and I passed it on to somebody else because I'm just a steward of God's comfort. And then I heard the songwriter go say that he went on to say that my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living won't be in vain. He went on to say, if I can do my duty as a good man ought, if I can bring back beauty to a world of wrought, if I can spread love's message as the master taught, then my living won't be in vain. But I was inspired by the songwriter, picked up my pen, and wrote my own verse. Lord have mercy. I wrote my own verse. My own verse.
word said that if I can just suffer like Jesus taught, follow his example and walk the walk, show some love and offer cheer, then my living, you ain't gonna help me, then my living will not be in vain. We are the stewards of God's comfort. Yes, we are. We are the stewards of God's comfort. But look at the Apostle Paul here in the eighth verse. He tells them, he said, look, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning what I went through in age and minor. Can I tell you something this morning? You see? If you're going to be comfort of God's comfort, you're going to be a steward. You got to learn to pass it on. Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant about what I went through, but I want you to understand. You need to understand something that what I went through, it was good for me. You ain't gonna help me. It was good. Uh, that I went through it uh, because God brought me comfort. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, it was good uh, that I suffered. Uh, it was good uh, that I was shipwrecked. Uh, it was good uh, that they beat me. Uh, yes, it was because in the midst of all I've been through, uh, yes, Lord, of lying on me, in the midst of talking about me, in the midst of you mistreating me, God, God, he comforted me, yes he did, he took me in his arms and he rocked me. the God. He is the God of all comfort. And no matter what you're going through, no matter. God will comfort you and bring you to a place of encouragement. And you will be encouraged. I remember, I remember when I was growing up, I know y'all probably won't know this song. Y'all probably won't know this. You, you probably have to catch me, Rory. Uh, somewhere uh, on Z sharp. Uh, Z sharp. Z sharp, yeah. yeah. When I was a little boy, the saints used to gather around. I mean, after they had been through a trying time, and after they had been through uh, a heartache and hardship, they used to gather around. They used to sing this little song that said, Believe I run on. See what the end gonna be. Believe I run on. See what the end's gonna be. Believe I run on. See what the end's gonna be. Believe I run on. See what the end's gonna be. Let me tell you now, John said, I got a long white road waiting up in heaven for me. I believe I run. Leave my prayer. See what the end's gonna be. Leave my prayer. 
believe I'll run on to Hallelujah. see what the end's gonna be. Maybe you're there this morning and you need God to comfort and encourage you. Right where you are, I want you to acknowledge to the Lord. You don't have to tell the person sitting next to you. You just need to tell God, God, I need you to I be the you. God of I'm all comfort yes. in my life. I need you I need to you. encourage me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I need you to encourage right where you are. As I pray the prayer of faith, I believe God is going to touch you right where you are. Now, God, we come to you again after hearing your word that you are the God of all comfort, that you are the God who supplies the God who sustains, and then the God who makes us stewards of your comfort. I pray in the name of Jesus that you comfort each and every one, encourage their heart even right now. Build them up where they're torn down. Bring them in where they're out. Strengthen them where they are weak. In the name of Jesus, do it according to your word and according to your will. God, have your way. We decree it now. We decree it now. And we declare it in Jesus' name. By faith, it is done. Because when we ask you, God, we believe it now. And doubting nothing, in the name of Jesus, man, be encouraged. Man, be encouraged. Man, be encouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord and be encouraged. Woman, be encouraged. Woman, be encouraged. Grab hold of God. Grab hold of faith. Encourage yourself. In the name of Jesus, God is there to encourage you. In the name of Jesus, we receive it now. We receive it now. We receive it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on and tell it thank you. Come on and tell it thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We receive, we receive your comfort. In Jesus' name, we bless him and we give him glory. Amen and amen. Amen. Give me something. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're preparing for, for our to partake in the Lord's Supper, amen, sacrament, amen, as we have, we show diligently. First Sunday. Amen. Amen. First Sunday. Y'all have y'all communion cups? Yes. Amen. You have your communion cups? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Y'all sing me something. Sometimes, so much trouble. Cried sometimes, laid awake at night, I laid awake at night. but that's all, right. that's all right, I know that my Jesus, Jesus he will fix you, after a while, after a while. trouble in my way, trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes, I have to cry sometimes, so much trouble, I lay awake at night, y'all. But that's all right. I know that my Jesus after a while. That's all right. I know that my Jesus, Jesus he will fix it. After a while, trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, so much trouble. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have 
the grass untied. A little wind can fly. A little wind can fly. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus, he will be sick. After a while. After a while. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to moan. you. I hope that you there at home have received and are ready yes, to Lord God. participate with us in the Lord's Supper. Amen. It is a sacrament of the church, one that Jesus himself instituted. Amen. We find the reading of the scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Amen. That we follow for this high and holy service. For the Bible declared in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, and not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak, and sickly among you, and many are and many are asleep. Bow your heads, our Father. We come now in this holy sacrament. First of all, we ask that you would forgive us for all of our sins, wash us and make us clean, presentable in your sight that as we partake of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we would be conformed into the likeness of your dear Son. Search us now. If you find anything in us that shouldn't be taken out, cleanse us, wash us, make us whole. God, we want to represent you, and we want the life of Christ to be evident in our lives. For it is in his name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. If you're there at home, if you have a piece of bread and some juice or some water, you can participate along with us. Amen. Amen. Jesus took the bread. He had given thank, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, the body of God. After the same manner, when he had supped, he cooked, took the cup. And he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, 
drink it in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. so grateful that you tuned in and you've joined us in our yes, worship Lord. hour. Amen. Now I want you to prepare your hearts to give. Amen. Prepare your hearts to give as unto the Lord, for the Lord has been good unto us and has given unto us. Those of you who are watching us on our church's website or our, our live stream or on Facebook Live, amen, I want you to receive the word of the Lord. Amen. And when you've received the word, it is proper and in order for us to give. Amen. So download the Giblify app on your mobile device. Amen. Download the Giblify app on your mobile device. Connect it to your account. Go to the Eman find the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. There you will see a picture of the church and you will see my handsome face. <laughs> Amen. When you see my handsome face, you know that you are in the right place amen and that you are sowing into good ground yes god has blessed us abundantly and we are too blessed not to give amen if you still have life and health you're still breathing you are too blessed not to give amen, amen. for god declared that when you give he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive those of you who have joined us in the sanctuary, in the back seat pocket in front of you or behind you, there should be an envelope. Amen. You can take that envelope, put your offering in that envelope. Amen. And, and, and fill it out. And on your way out the door, right there in the center aisle, amen, right there on the center of the door, there's a little, there's a black collection bo box. Right there, all you have to do is drop that envelope right in on the top. Amen your offering will be received and we are grateful now let's bless those who are giving on this morning father we bless you and we thank you for the opportunity to give because god we know that giving is of you we return unto you a portion of that which you have given unto us bless the tithe payers that will pay their tithes bless those who will give abundantly because you have blessed us abundantly Return it unto the giver. Amen. Return it unto the giver. 30, 60, and 100 fold. Even eternal life in the world to come. Bless them in their health. Make their, let there be peace in their home. God bless them financially. Bless their coming out and their going in. Bless their down sitting and their uprising. Bless them on their jobs. Yes. Whatever endeavor they have. I pray your blessing be upon them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you now and we give you glory. Thank the Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. I want you to join us back here Tuesday night, 6.30 for prayer. Amen. Then 7 p.m. For, Bi for Bible study. Amen. Join us Tuesday night, 6.30 for prayer, and 7 p.m. for Bible study. Amen. Then we'll be back on next Sunday. Amen. Right here at 930 for Sunday school and then 11 a.m. for our morning worship. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. We're looking forward to seeing you soon in the sanctuary. Amen. As soon as we can. Amen. God bless you. We're prepared.
Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. Everybody lift your voice and say down from this place, never from your divine presence, continue to keep us, keep our home safe, keep our loved ones safe. God, continue to protect us in the name of Jesus as we go to and for taking care of the necessary things of life. We pray your divine protection be upon each of us. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for the healing that you've already displayed in our midst. We thank you for those who were sick, but now they have been healed, cleared by their doctor, and shall soon join us again here in the sanctuary. We thank you, Lord, for them. In the name of Jesus, continue to bless us and keep us, and we'll give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Sunday.